Number 39. Balance each of the following equations according to the half-reaction method. And we have letter C. So in this case, we have to balance CN minus plus ClO2, which will yield CNO minus plus Cl minus. And we have to balance this in acidic conditions. Beautiful. So I wrote down all of the steps that we have to memorize in order to balance something in an acidic condition. All right. So let's get going. First off, please memorize this in the order that it's given. Um, it's like this for a reason. If you try to mess up the steps, it's not going to work out. Um, but yeah, that's it. There's nine steps. It may look intimidating, but I promise it's easier than it, than it seems. Okay. All right. So let's go for it. The first thing we got to do is we have to balance into half reactions. What that means is you just have to match certain elements that's on the left side and the right side. So when we break into half reactions, we should have two reactions and the elements go together. So for example, since this compound has a carbon and a nitrogen, I'm going to link it up with the one that has carbon and nitrogen in it. So this reaction, when it splits, will link up with this guy because that's the one that has the C in the N. And then let's see, does the opposite make sense? Well, yeah, I have a chlorine, right, on this side, and I have a chlorine on this side. So that links up. So my two half reactions would be this go into this, and then this go into this. Don't worry about if one part has an oxygen and the other one doesn't. Step three is balance oxygen. So you can always add oxygens and hydrogens. Link up the other elements. Okay. So we have CN minus, and that's aqueous, yields CNO minus, and that's aqueous. And then we have ClO2, and that's aqueous, yields Cl minus aqueous. Okay, cool. So step number one is done. We broke them up. Now what we're going to do for the rest of the steps is we're going to Basically, when we do step two, we're going to do step two for both of them before moving on to step three, and then do step three for both of them before moving on to step four, et cetera, et cetera. It just makes it easier. Okay, so step two, we balance all the elements except for hydrogen and except for oxygen. So in this step, I'm looking for all other elements, not hydrogen and not oxygen. So I have three here. I have to balance the carbon, right? I have to balance the nitrogen and I have to balance the chlorine. I don't care about the oxygen at this stage, but if I look at them, right? I have one carbon. I got one carbon, so that's balanced. I got one nitrogen. I have one nitrogen, so that's balanced. One chlorine and one chlorine. So that's all balanced. So this step, I checked it, it's balanced for me, so I don't, I don't have to do it. Next. The next step is to balance oxygen. Oxygen before hydrogen, guys, okay? So oxygen comes first. We gotta balance the oxygen by adding H2O. So quick tip here, if you need to balance or if you need to add one oxygen, you will add it as one H2O. There's only one oxygen in H2O. So if you need to add two oxygens, you'll add two H2Os. If you need to add three oxygens, you add three H2Os. So let's see, I'll work from top to bottom. I have an oxygen on my left side, right? And I only have one of them and I have no oxygen here. So if I have one on this side, I need to add one, one oxygen, one H2O. You could put the one here, but I don't. If, if I only need one, I don't write the coefficient. So that's balanced. Now we just got to do the bottom. Let's see, I have an O2, right? So I have two oxygens. Hmm, I have two oxygens. I need to add two H2O, mainly because I didn't have any oxygen on this side. Now this step is balanced. Yeah! Now let's work on the next one. Now we go for the hydrogens by adding H plus. So same exact rule applies. If I need to add one hydrogen, 
I will add it as one H plus. Don't forget that plus charge, guys, okay? So let's see. I have H2 on my left side, so I have two hydrogens. I have no hydrogens here, so I need to add two H plus. Let's do the same thing for the bottom. Well, I have a hydrogen here. I have two, right? But now it's being multiplied by two. So how many total hydrogens do I have? I have four hydrogens. So I need to add four H plus on this side. And now that step is balanced. Now we need to go to step five, and that's to balance the charges. We balance the charges by adding the electrons. Electrons are E negative, and you always add them to the more positive side. We need to find the overall charges of these half reactions. So I like to split them down the middle. Let's work with the top one again, right? Always look in that upper right-hand corner to find out the charges. So for water, I don't see a charge. There was nothing here. So that means that this is a zero charge, right? And so I'll put zero, right? But for the CN, I see a minus. That means that it's a minus one, right? And there was only one of them. So this would be an overall minus one. And you add the two charges together. Zero plus a negative one is a negative one. So that's the overall charge on the left side. Now we got to do the same for this side. Well, I see for CNO, I have a negative one. There's only one of these. So the overall charge would be a negative one. But now on this one, I have plus one, but I have two of them. So I have to multiply. This would be an overall plus two and you add those two numbers together, negative one plus a positive two, negative one plus two, or two minus one is a plus one. These are the two numbers that you are comparing with. You always add the electrons to the more positive side. So between a negative one and a positive one, a positive one is more positive, right? So I need to know that I need to add electrons here, but now the question is, how many? Well, what's the difference between these? You want to take this positive and go down to the negative one. So on a number line, how many numbers are these apart? There are two numbers apart, right? I need to go to zero, and then I'll go to negative one. So I need to add two electrons. And now, since I did that, I'm going to actually just erase this, because I'm trying to just make... It's going to get maybe a little hairy, so I just want to make sure that I get rid of the work. Okay. So now we're at that stage. Let's do the same thing for the bottom. Now I see that I have a plus. That's a plus one, right? And there's four of them. So this would be a total of a plus four charge. And maybe I'll write that in black. So this is a plus four ClO2, there was no charge here, so it's a zero. And you add these two together, so the total charge on this side would be a plus four. Now let's do it for, well, let's do it for the product side, right? I see that I have a negative. This is a negative one. I only have one of them, so this would be a negative one. Plus, because plus. Now for the H2O, it's the same exact idea. I don't see anything, so that's a zero. So this would be a zero. Plus one, plus, uh, sorry, negative one, plus zero is a negative one. Okay. Now, we just have to add the electrons to the more positive side. Well, between a plus four and a negative one, a plus four is more positive. So I need to add electrons on this side. I need to add them onto the reactant side, but how many? Well, what's the difference between these two? How many numbers would I need to go to get two from a plus four to a negative one. Well, I need to go from plus uh, four to a zero, right? There's four numbers in between to get to the zero, and then I need one more to get to the negative one. So it's a total of five electrons, right? So that's it. Now this is a checkpoint. Just make sure that the electrons that you added are on opposite sides. In this case, they are on opposite sides, which means I will proceed further. 
But if you have like, you know, if you had the two electrons on this side and they were on the same side, go back. Try it again. Something went wrong. Okay. So now I'm going to check this off. I'm going to erase this because it's, it's just getting too, a little bit too crazy in here. So I just want to get rid of the unnecessary work. Okay. And I'm just going to erase this. Okay. Now, next part is to balance those electrons. We need to balance those electrons by looking at how many we have of each. So on this side, right, I have five electrons. On this side, I have two electrons. I can only balance by multiplying, and you want to get them to be the lowest number that's similar between them. So what's the lowest number between five and two? 10, right? They have no other number in common except for multiplying them by each other. So how would I get to 10? Well, I would multiply this whole equation by five, and I would multiply this whole equation by two. But you gotta be fair. When you do that, you have to multiply each one. Yes, this is the crazy part. So you have to multiply each coefficient by five. And for the bottom one, you have to multiply each one by two. Okay, so you gotta be fair. So let's see, how am I gonna write this in which it's not messy? I will pull this out, right? So I'll just say that this is going to be a five. And I'll say that this part is gonna be a two, right? And now I'm just going to change my coefficients. If you want to rewrite the equation, you can, right? I just have limited space here. So we're multiplying everything by five times. So in this case, there was one H2O, but one times five is now going to be five H2Os. I had one CN here, but I got to multiply it by five. So now I have five CNs. We move on. I had one CNO minus, but times by five, I now have five CNO minuses. I have two H pluses, but I'm multiplying it by five. So now this number turns into a 10. Two times five is 10. And then the same thing here, two times five is 10. So I'm just going to erase this and say that I now have 10 E negative. We're gonna do the same thing for the bottom, but now we keep in mind that we're timesing everything by two. So five times two is 10. So I'm just going to erase this and put 10 E minus. I had four, I had four H pluses times by two, four times two is eight. So this new number is now an eight. I had one ClO2 times two now, so I have two of them, right? I had one CL minus, but now times by two, so two CL minus. And I had two H2Os times by two, so now I have a total of four. Whew, okay. So that was all of step six, awesome. Now I'm going to just erase these numbers, okay. Now we come to the canceling mode. We cancel like substances that are on opposite sides. All we're doing is we're simplifying. So that's why we had to get those electrons to be the same because we want them to cancel. Usually electrons are never going to be in a balanced equation. So that's why they're the same on both sides. So that's why they get canceled. So I don't care about them. But now I look at other um, substances. Let's see. Well, I have eight H pluses, right, on my, my reactant side on the bottom, and I have 10 H pluses on the top. I can simplify this. We simplify by subtracting. If I get rid of all of my eight, how many would be left over here? Well, you're literally subtracting eight of them, right? So 10 minus eight is a total of two. So we now have two H pluses on this side. Let's see, anything else that I can cancel? Oh yeah, the water, right? I have four H2Os on this side. 
and I have five of them on this side. So subtraction, guys, I would have none of them left here. And how many would be remaining? Five minus four is one. So I would only have one H2O left. I can't cancel out anything else. So I'm just going to rewrite what I have. And remember, left side stay, right side stay. And that's what the last step is. The last step is after you simplify everything, all you got to do is just combine it all into one equation. Doesn't matter who comes first. I just like to work from top to bottom. So it would be H2O plus 5 CN minus, which is aqueous. And maybe I'll get rid of this plus 2 ClO2 aqueous yields, now I'll just work with this side, 5 CNO minus aqueous plus 2 H plus plus 2 Cl minus aqueous. And that is it, guys. This is the final, 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 final answer. So this one was a little bit tricky, but I know you guys got it. Do you see why going through the rules and just, just making sure that you've done them all correctly is really going to help you, okay? So that's it. Hopefully this helped, guys. Let me know what you thought. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It would help us out. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys. You guys rock. And I'll see you guys all in the next lesson. Bye-bye.